goes without saying that the last two days have been very dark for our world. In two separate instances, half the world apart, people who thought they were escaping life's everyday stresses, who thought they were going to have a chance to relax with friends and loved ones, were attacked, and many lost their lives. The events in Bulgaria and in Colorado not only shattered the lives of those involved, but they shattered the belief that we all cling to, that there are completely safe places where escape from the evils of the world is possible. A bitter pill to swallow, so painful, so unsettling. But the truth is that Judaism has always known that places, even strong and beautiful ones, are vulnerable to evil. Yesterday at sundown began the month of Av, the saddest month of the Jewish year. It is so sad because it is on the night of this month, Tisha B'Av, that Jews all over the world remember the most terrible days of our history, especially the destruction of the temples in Jerusalem. The temples of Jerusalem were grand and tall and were the center of Jewish life during their time. People made pilgrimages to them, wrote songs about them, viewing the approach to the temple as going up to a higher plane where the idea of Aliyah comes from, making Aliyah to the temple. Psalm 122, among many, states, I rejoiced when they said to me, we are going to the house of God. We are going to the temple. The loss of those places was so catastrophic because of the loss of life that came with them and because of our ancestors' expectations of safety in them, of their longevity, were so high. Reformed Jews have long protested that since we do not yearn for a temple in Jerusalem, Tisha B'Av holds less meaning for us. The month of Av is not a sad month if we don't mourn the primary event that it reminds us of, and on some level this may be true. We, along with most Jews in this world, do not yearn for the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. However, we do continue to mourn during the month of Av another entity, the loss of innocence, the same loss that we all feel when we reflect on the tragedies of the last two days. When the temples were destroyed and the Jews lost Jerusalem, they lost trust in a place they had that they thought would always be there and be safe, be a shelter. Whether it's the temple in Jerusalem or a tour bus in Bulgaria or a movie theater in Colorado, when safe havens are violated, we are all affected and we all lose a little bit of our innocence. The truth is that Judaism the kind that we practice today is our rabbi's answer to this shattering of innocence. They taught us that there is no escaping physical loss in this world. Our places are transitory, even our lives. Sometimes our places and our safety crumble slowly, and sometimes they come crashing down. But none of them pass through. And when they are gone, when we have nowhere to go, when places cannot provide refuge and holiness, we must create it using what we have left, using time and the goodness within us. So they built an entire tradition around a dual mandate. We must work to make the world safer, work to fix it and to heal it, and we must observe the passage of time as carefully as we might through a stone in the temple walls. Our calendar gives us off, so we might remember how vulnerable we are. And it gives us Shabbat, so we might remember how precious we are. And it gives us Simchas, like a bar mitzvah, so that we might remember how much there is to celebrate and hope for in life. Our tradition gives us values that insist that we respond to weeks like this with positive action that builds up humanity even when it feels impossible. This Sabbath Eve, we cry for the people who lost loved ones this week. 
We send our love and our prayers to them. And we are here for each other to work through fears that times like these awaken. And this Sabbath Eve that everyone we are commanded to celebrate, we celebrate and find refuge in the Jewish realization that every new second brings a new moment for holy discovery and sacred action. And that potential is never confined to a place. Its potential lives inside us and it lives among us. Thank you, God, for our tradition and for the many spiritual shelters it provides. And we hope and pray that it provides a sheltering presence this night.